Could I interest you in buying me a cup of chicken gumbo? Holy damn crap. Is that you, Steve? Yes. It most certainly is fancy seeing you here. In the cafeteria of a deep underground military base. I know. When I got the text message informing me that the world would be ending momentarily and that I needed to evacuate immediately, I figured that the deep underground military base would only be full of important people, like soldiers, politicians, and celebrities. And it is. I still haven't figured out why in the hell they would want me to be one of the people to perpetuate the human race though. Well, I suppose that Bill Clinton and Bono still need floor sweepers. Even after the apocalypse. So true. I ran into Paul McCartney down here the other day. Are you sure that it was the original James Paul McCartney? After all, it could have been William Jr. Campbell or Billy Shears. Wait. Are you telling me that there's more than one Paul McCartney? Oh yes. Some people think that the real James Paul McCartney died in late 1966 and that he was replaced with a look-alike. But that's completely batshit crazy insane. How could one of the most talented and recognizable people who ever lived have been replaced without everyone knowing about it? Don't be a sucker. That is exactly what they want you to think. They? Who in the freaking hell are they? What the hell are you talking about? You can't just replace the greatest songwriter in the history of the world a few weeks before they started recording their most important album, Sgt. Pepper. But Sgt. Pepper is a clue in itself. Shut up for a second. You're standing there, telling me that the person who wrote and sang Penny Lane isn't the same person who wrote and sang Eleanor Rigby? That's what you're telling me. I have that part right? Well, like I said, some people think that the original died in late 1966. Others think that he never died. They think that he was only temporarily replaced from Sgt. Pepper through the Magical Mystery Tour. Others are certain that he wasn't physically replaced, but that he just had his soul swapped with Aleister Crowley's. Aleister Crowley? You mean the guy from the Ozzy Osbourne song, Mr. Crowley? The guy who called himself the Beast 666? That Aleister Crowley? Well, I didn't say that I believed it, but there's a lot of symbolic stuff in Kenneth Anger's Lucifer Rising pointing to the possibility that Paul underwent a death and rebirth ritual in order to become Crowley. But why the fuck would the fool on the hill want to become a Lannister Crowley? Well, I'm actually kind of glad that you brought that up. The fool is one of the... It's one of the cards in a tarot deck. Right. But what in the world of stinking Christ does that have to do with the Beatles? Let's take a step back for a second. A step back? You're standing there. Three feet away from me, with a stray goddamn face, trying to sell me a stinking diaper full of decomposing puppies, and you want me to take a fucking step back. I know I this whole thing sounds a little bit nutty, but I'm certain you'll begin to see the light, if you'd just listen to Revolution 9 backwards. Why? Does it say Paul McCartney may have died between Revolver and Sgt. Pepper, or that maybe he became a Lannister fucking Crowley? Of course it doesn't say that. Don't be ridiculous. What it does say is Turn Me On Dead Man, which is a reference to the Sgt. Pepper song called A Day in the Life, which either about the automobile, crash that killed Paul, the car crash that killed his friend Tara Brown, or the car crash that killed Brian Jones. Brian freaking Jones. You mean the fat beach boy who went insane? No. That's Brian Wilson. Oh right. Sorry about that. No, Brian Jones was the founder of the Rolling Stones. You see, when Tara Brown supposedly crashed his sports car, Brian Jones' future girlfriend Suki Poti was in the car, but wasn't even scratched. So fucking what? Well, after Tara Brown's death, Suki just happened to move in with Brian Jones. Wait. I think I know where you're heading with this. Give it a shot, boss man. You're suggesting that Brian Jones was murdered in Tara Brown's car in order to make it appear as if Tara died and that Tara took Brian's place in the Rolling Stones and kept Suki as his girlfriend. You know what? This actually explains why Brian Jones, who was supposedly a musical genius, began to take such a minor role in the band before being found dead in his pool. Of course. The body in Brian's pool was actually Tara Brown, because the real Brian Jones was killed in Tara's car. Yes. Oh no, actually. What if Paul was pretending to be Tara that day and he's the one who died in the car crash? Right. Because he wanted to be a Lannister Crowley? No. I don't think that Alistair Crowley fits into this scenario. So why in the name of he who walks behind the rose, would Paul McCartney have been driving Tara Brown's car that day? Because he was fucking Tara's girlfriend. So who died in Brian Jones's pool? I'm sorry to say this, but it was probably just Brian Jones. So who did I meet the other day then? 
Well, clearly, it was either James Paul McCartney, William Jr. Campbell, Billy Shears, Brian Jones, Tara Brown, or possibly Denny Lane. Denny Lane? I think I'm going to need more than a cup of chicken gumbo for this. Can I buy you a drink, sailor? I thought you'd never ask.